Hello, I'm Sabrina and this is Study Abroad. In this episode, we'll also be traveling abroad because we are talking famous female explorers. Let's start our engines with Amelia Earhart. Born in 1897, she was just a little tomboy with a love for science. But when she was 23, her father paid $10 for her to fly on this ditzy little airplane at a fair, and she fell in love. She saved up her money to buy a leather jacket. Yeah, because that was the only way pilots would take her seriously. Like, seriously. Much like hipsters trying to get that I got this at a thrift shop aesthetic, Amelia slept in that leather jacket every night so it would make her look more experienced. She also saved up for lessons and she approached fellow female trailblazer Anita Snook and said, I want to fly. Will you teach me? And she did. All of this led to her famed 1932 transatlantic solo flight. At the age of 34, she took off from Newfoundland and 14 hours and 56 minutes later, she landed in Northern Ireland. Amelia used the fame and fortune from her flight to encourage women to join aviation, promote commercial air travel, and of course, fund her own flights. But like Icarus, Amelia flew too high or too far. In 1937, on her second attempt to circumnavigate the globe, her plane went down over the Nukumanu Islands. Despite $4 million poured into her search and rescue, her, her co-pilot, and her plane were never found. Theories of her disappearance range from a tragic crash, an international conspiracy, to even a book suggesting her moving to New Jersey and changing her name to Irene Bolam. The actual Irene Bolam was like, what? and sued the publisher. But maybe air travel isn't your thing. Maybe you prefer biking. Then you will love Annie Londonderry Kopchowski. The story goes that this lady took on a wager from two Boston businessmen that if she could bike around the world in 15 months, they'd give her $5,000 each. So without even knowing how to ride a bike, she left behind her husband and her three children to begin her world travel. She went from America to France to Egypt and Singapore before returning to Boston exactly 15 months later. She she funded her journey by telling stories and wearing signs and effectively becoming a human billboard, including one for her famous moniker, the Londonderry Lithia Springwater Company. But notably, Annie spent more time traveling on boats than bikes, and she had a knack for embellishing her achievements. But nonetheless, Annie Londonderry turned this image of the classic lady on its head one pedal at a time. But finally, one of my favorite ladies from history, Nellie Bly. She has had such a giant career that I can't cover all of it in this video, but I can tell you that while working as a journalist for the New York World in 1888, she decided that she was going to be the first to turn fiction into fact. Specifically, Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days. Nellie used a series of trains and boats to travel the globe, doing things like buying a monkey and visiting a leper colony. But near the tail end of her journey, she fell behind. She was going to be late until Joseph Pulitzer chartered a private train to bring her home, ending her trip eight days before Phineas Fogg. These women were adventurers in the purest sense of the word. They refused to be tied down by any shackle, whether it's social expectations or simple gravity. They simply wanted to see the world and in doing so, changed it for the better. And these famous female explorers have truly inspired me to stay indoors, probably take a nap. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, maybe consider liking it and subscribing to Snarled. You'll get more of this, and if that is a deterrent, don't worry, there's a bunch of other awesome content on this channel. But if you do want more of this, you can find me on my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash nerdy and quirky. I'm sorry. <laughs>